Hey, this is Brandon Kish, and this is a tutorial on how to make a delay function for your programming. The quick explanation of this is that you would copy this command, this function, into your program above the main command. And the way you would execute it is you would call it using the name of the function. So I named my function sleep. And then you put how many milliseconds that you would like the program to be delayed. So obviously if you want one second, that would be 1,000 milliseconds. That's the very quick explanation of how this works. The long explanation is, we have our function call here. It's our command that's actually going to call our function. And we're going to send 1,000 to our function. So now it's going to come up to our function. And it's going to put 1,000 into m seconds for milliseconds. This this variable is actually an unsigned long integer that allows us to put a variable of a maximum size of this here. So this is the maximum uh, value that this variable can hold. And this has to do with the binary representation of it. So once we pass this variable into our function here, we're going to come to our first command, which is a for loop. So what this is going to do is it passes m seconds into this first for loop. So as many times, at the, whatever the value ha we have here, this for loop is going to execute that many times. So it's going to repeat whatever is inside of its brackets here. Well, what we have inside of its brackets is a command that takes roughly one millisecond to complete. Now the way I calculated this is I'm actually in my debugging mode and I opened up my watch stopwatch window and to do this you go to debugger and click stopwatch and you'll see here that I've opened up oh, another window called stopwatch. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and start my command. I'm gonna execute it until I get to the point of my delay, my actual delay uh, command. And it, this is telling me how long it's taken since the PIC has started to actually reach this line of code. But this is actually in microseconds here, not milliseconds. So as you can see, it's uh, microseconds. So it's taken 10 microseconds to get to my command. So I'm going to go ahead and zero this out because I want to calculate how long it's going to take for just this command. And since I have a break in my function at this command, it's going to go ahead and execute this command, and I have a second break at the first for loop. So what this is going to do is it's going to execute this code here. Then it, since it's designed to repeat in this for loop, it's going to come out of the loop and continue here, but it's going to pause because of my second break command. So I'm going to go ahead and continue my code. And we can see that now it's executing this line of code and it's counting how many microseconds it's taken. Now if we look closely here, we can see that it's no longer in microseconds, it's in milliseconds. And our value is 1.006800. Basically meaning that that execution of that one line of code has taken about one millisecond to complete. Now since we're continuing to repeat this command over and over for as many times as we put into msec there, if we were to continue the loop, you would see it count upwards again to two, mil uh, two milliseconds. So here we've completed that loop twice and we're at two milliseconds. If we go ahead and complete it a third time, you can see that it goes up to three milliseconds. So you can get the idea that every time this loop is completed, it takes one millisecond. So what this means is, is we pass our variable as long as as many times as we pass into here, it's going to repeat this, and it's going to pause the program for one millisecond every time. 